Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Let's take a moment to learn how we can use the map module to view where our photographs were taken, as well as quickly add GPS and location metadata to our images that don't have embedded GPS data. I'm going to begin with this collection of images that were taken with a variety of devices, some of which embedded GPS data, but unfortunately some did not. Now, if we want to see if there are GPS coordinates embedded in a photograph, in the metadata panel, you can choose a preset such as EXIF, EXIF and IPTC, or in this case, I'll just choose location. Now we can see that GPS data. If we click on the arrow to the right of the GPS location, Lightroom Classic will take us to the map module. Or if we have an image that has this little map badge, it's a little marker, in the image thumbnail, we can click on that to go to the map module. Lightroom Classic displays markers on the map for those photos that contain GPS information. One thing to note, in order to use the map module, you do need to have internet connectivity. Now in order to navigate the map, in the toolbar we can use the slider to either zoom out or zoom in on the map. We can click on the zoom out button or zoom in button or we can use our scroll wheel to either zoom out or zoom in on the map. We can also hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows, and then click and drag over an area of the map in order to zoom into it. Panning the map is as easy as just dragging the map in the preview area. There are several different ways that the map can be displayed. This is the hybrid view, but we can change the style using the drop-down menu, so if I prefer to see a road map or maybe the satellite view, we can select that from the list. We can also hold down the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows and move through the list by tapping one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, let's return to the hybrid style for now. And in the lower right is the map key where we can see what the different markers represent. If the key isn't showing, you can use the view menu and then choose to show map key. By default, all of the images in the selected collection or folder that contain GPS information are going to be displayed on the map. So the orange markers represent the unselected images, whereas the yellow marker would show those photos that are selected. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And as we do, we can see that the markers split. So Lightroom Classic groups images together based on proximity as well as zoom level and displays the number in the group over the marker. When we hover our cursor above a marker, Lightroom Classic displays a preview of the images in that location. If there's more than one image, we can use the arrow to move through the different images. If I click on a marker, then those images become selected in the film strip. If I select a different image in the film strip, then it will select the different marker and we can see that it turns yellow. If I hover my cursor over a single image in the film strip that has GPS coordinates embedded, then that marker will animate. Notice that in the metadata panel, this image contains not only GPS information, but also has embedded location information, including the city, state, country or region, and ISO country code. But what if the images don't have GPS data embedded? Well, if we knew the GPS information, we could enter it into the GPS field, but most likely we won't know that. Instead, it might be easier to find the location on the map and then drag and drop our photos onto it. But first, let's use the filter bar at the top of the map in order to filter our collection. We can choose to view only those images visible on the map. So now there are only a few images visible in our film strip. If we were to zoom out, then we can see more images on the map as well as in the film strip. Or we can filter on only those images that are tagged with GPS data. The images without GPS data are now darkened or screened back in the film strip or we can filter on all of the images that are untagged, the ones that don't contain the GPS data. Now, before we add the GPS data, if we want Lightroom Classic to suggest location information based on that GPS, we'll want to enable the address lookup. 
I'll choose my catalog settings. On Windows, this would be under the Edit menu. And then select the Metadata tab. Under the Address Lookup area, we can have Lightroom Classic look up the city, state, country, and ISO code of the GPS coordinates and provide address suggestions. We can also have Lightroom automatically export these suggestions if the original location fields were empty when we added the GPS information. And we'll talk more about exporting location information in just a moment. All right, let's close this with both of those options enabled. If we ever need to pause the address lookup, we can click in the identity plate and click on address lookup. But for now, I'll click it again in order to leave it enabled. Then I'm going to select the first image in this collection and I can either click in the search field or we can use the keyboard shortcut Command F on Mac or Control F on Windows. And I'm going to search for Slobard Global Seed Vault. Although I'm searching by name, you can also enter the longitude and latitude information if you know it. Then I'll tap Enter or Return and Lightroom Classic will take me to that location on the map. Lightroom Classic has added a marker to that location with a dot in it that tells me that that is the search result. Now I can drag and drop that image from the film strip right on top of that marker. In the metadata panel, we can see that the GPS information has been added, and because we enabled the address lookup, the city, state, country or region, and ISO country codes also appear. Notice that because the location information was suggested and not embedded in the file, it's in italics. All right, let's remove that search criteria and I'll go ahead and zoom out a bit. Now, if we're not sure where the location is or you don't know the name, or maybe it doesn't even have a name, we can also find a location using the map. If I hover my cursor over this marker, we can see that there are a number of mushrooms that were photographed at that location. Well, I happen to know that that's also the location that I photographed these fox. I was just using a different camera. So let's go ahead and zoom in to this area. Then I'll select all of the Arctic fox and drag and drop them near the mushrooms on the map. Then let's go ahead and set the filter to none. Now, what if I've made a mistake and I need to reposition the images on the map? Well, they're still selected in the film strip, so I could simply drag and drop them to a different location. When we do this, both the GPS information as well as the location information will be updated. In fact, that's always true of the GPS information. If you move the image on the map, the GPS data will be updated. However, we can override the location information. Maybe you have a nickname for the location. I'll go ahead and just type in Fox Playground. And now, even if I move the location on the map, the location information won't change. But Lightroom Classic will only apply that override to the image that is most selected. If we hover our cursor on top of the group of images and we move through them, we can see that that sublocation that I put the nickname of the Fox Playground isn't applied to all of the images. So I'll return to the first image in the group and then I'll select Sync Metadata. Let's scroll down until we find that sublocation. I want to make sure that nothing else is checked, so I'll choose Check None and then just select that one metadata field and choose Synchronize to apply that metadata to all of the images that are at that location. Now, if I want to reposition only one of the images in this location, we can either select it from the film strip and drag and drop it, or I can find the image using the preview and then drag and drop just that one image in order to relocate it. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out a bit. And if you navigate to certain areas often, we can save an area to help speed the navigation. On the Save Location panel, I'll click on the plus icon. We can see that it is named the location, but we could always change that. I'll save it to the My Locations folder, and I can change the radius, as well as tag the location as private. This is helpful if we don't want the location information to be included when we export the file. 
and it can be useful for sensitive locations such as images taken at a home or a school perhaps. Then once we create the location, we can always change the size of the location. I'll just zoom out a bit and I can use the outer dot here to shrink down the location and then use the inner dot if I want to reposition it. In the Save Location folder, Lightroom Classic displays the number of images that have been saved to that location. And if I've navigated to another location on the map, when I click to the arrow next to the number, Lightroom Classic will automatically take me back to that location. Now you might have noticed that the other save locations that I have don't appear to have any images associated with them, but actually they do. However, we're only going to see the images in the save locations if they're in the folder or the collection that we have selected. So I'll use the shortcut at the top of the film strip in order to quickly select all of my photographs. And now we can see all of those different locations actually do contain images. I'll go ahead and click on the arrow next to Death Valley, and we can see that Lightroom Classic takes me to that location. And if I click on any of these, it will automatically show me those images and select them in the film strip. Once a location has been created in the Save Locations panel, you can drag and drop additional images onto the save location. And likewise, you can drag and drop a save location to a photo in the film strip. All right, a few tips before we wrap up. I'm gonna choose the file menu and then export. When we export our images, even if we don't mark a location as being private, we can remove the location information either by unchecking it or by selecting copyright only or copyright and contact information only, in which case the location information will automatically be removed. If we ever want to delete location information, we can select a photo or multiple photos. And while we could delete the information from the metadata panel, it's probably easier to choose photo and then delete DPS coordinates or delete all location metadata. Also, while in the map module, we can easily create a collection based on a group of photographs at a specific marker location. Simply right click or control click on Mac and then choose Create Collection from the context sensitive menus. If you don't want to inadvertently move any of the markers, we can lock them down. Just click again to unlock them. And if you have a device that creates a GPS track log, like a device tracker or an app for your mobile device, you can click this icon in order to load the track log. Once the track log is loaded, you can then choose to auto tag the photos. Now before doing this, we should make sure that the camera capture time is set correctly. If not, you can choose the set track log time offset or change the capture time for your images. And finally, we can option click on Mac or alt click on Windows, the arrow next to the GPS coordinates in the metadata panel, either in the library or the map module to view the location via Google Maps in our default web browser. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.